right guys it is so as you can see I'm in Japan and it is the 2018 not Natori that's a bit wrong to say Natori sort of event I've just come out here to do a bit of research a bit of traveling but uh, it has started in an abysmal rain it is leathering that I've come for cherry blossom season so we're in the middle of cherry blossoms it usually Japan in March to April is quite hot actually it's quite it's rain sometimes but it's you, you know it's warmer than the west it's freezing i'm freezing it's colder here than it was in the uk and i'm wet this is not a great start however i've just been to an ikibana show for flower festival so i'll put some videos here At the moment I'm just for you for Natori guys I'm at the shrine dedicated to um, Tokugawa Ieyasu which is there and I've just been reading a signboard actually and uh, it was built by Toda Takotora uh, and this apparently used to be his residence Ueno Park I was actually thinking about what is the history behind Ueno Park and apparently according to this sign which I'll check is Toda Takatori used to own the, the area so what we don't know is whether Natori came here because we know Natori would have stayed in Edo uh, with his lord when they came to Edo but and of course hopefully gone to see um, the temple stroke sh shrine it's a mixture um, for the founder of the shogunate Tokugawa shogunate so we don't know but I'm going to have another gander so uh, this is basically the start let's go through some videos and I'm doing two weeks of travel Right guys, this is Ueno Park. This is uh, the famous Cherry Blossom Avenue. And as you can see, there's a, a lovely cherry blossom tree there behind me. And what you, what we find is here, this is a really famous place for cherry blossoms. And um, what happens normally here is there's a party on this weekend or one weekend a year, and it's probably not far off it now. I've got to check the uh, report. Um, but I'm, this is Ueno Park, Tokyo. And, uh, not the best start to uh, not the best start to uh, my Japan trip, but uh, so uh, everybody's got their umbrellas out, and it's time for me to go inside and get warm <laughs> in Asia. Go inside and get warm. So, uh, but however, for those who've never been to Japan, they're the cherry blossom trees. I'm not, sorry, I'm on. Uh, so as you can see, they're not 100% open yet, but the buds are there and uh, I can't really do it but all the way down that avenue is the um, where they normally there's a street party there and it is rammed on one weekend it's one of the best weekends you'll ever have in Japan but to get out of the rain I'm going to ditch into um, the National Museum um, but definitely the Cherry Blossom Festival here when normal weather returns is one of the best things you'll ever do in Japan You're right guys I've just found this um, this sword and uh, wonderfully it says uh, it's kept in the Kishu Tokugawa clan can you see just there let me zoom in there you go this sword was preserved for generations by the Kishu Tokugawa clan however it says 19th century so 1800s uh, just there you could zoom in again so it wasn't in Isui Sensei's time but it was um, later during the time that already existed I'm going to show you something interesting guys but I'm in the way of people but I'm going to show you the portrait there of a guy and that's his actual armour there so the portrait is of the guy and his armour is over here so hold on just have a watch So you can see the dragon there, the dragon, <coughs> obviously his hat, but if you look there, the dragon and the helmet, not hat, sorry, helmet, with, can you see the um, family crest there? For 
they're always going to get the new book. It explains what these are, these little rivets with the holes. It also explains how with this setup with the um, the hole, what goes in their little ribbons, how that comes across. And uh, what I am noticing as well is, uh, see the back there, the identification marker, or the uh, it's for the the sacred rope. But also the different slant, you can see the. Um, where's my finger gone? You can see that then slightly outwards. Sometimes they bend inwards, and that's all mentioned in the new book. Just basically, guys, just to let you know, every sword I'm coming across has the um, the hooks on it, all of them. Now we do know from um, the writings and we know from basic history that these hooks used to be, exist on most swords but we need to get them hooks on guys because it obviously mentions it a lot in, you know, it mentions definitely in the Wakazashi and uh, they're very prominent back in the early Edo period and Sengoku period. Right guys, it's still hammering it down at the minute so I decided I've spent about four or five hours in uh, the Japanese National Museum and because I've not been in it for a few years so as you can see I'm in the back garden there's now um, museums over there one of the uh, outer buildings is there uh, but it's just miserable <laughs> it's cold, miserable, wet but I've had a lovely time going through that stuff it's very interesting I maybe didn't pay as much attention as I should have done last time like and I normally pay and I do pay attention to museums but I've gone back through it with a new since I've been through there I've done all the ninja stuff and all the you know the research we've done so uh, it's a bit more interesting this time around it's a bit more there's a bit more depth in my mind to what's actually in there which is quite good so uh, I, I'm just gonna get a cup of tea and go home to my hotel I think I don't think much is gonna happen it's just not stopping with the rain not stopping I always return back to this tree you see that they've they've grown in a circle and it was there was one there in the Edo period I think this is a newer version but uh, yeah it's the famous temple where you you can go up and see oh I think I've shown it you before guys but basically I always enjoy looking at that it's awesome especially on Cherry Blossom Lane it's still raining <laughs> I'm gonna go and get some food and uh, I say call it a day but it's food time there's the cherry blossoms. Right, you're right, guys. This is uh, Tokyo's main station. So this is um, basically that was built in the 1900s when they invented the rail around here. But you're in Tokyo's main district. So this is actually Tokyo Station. A lot of people don't realise that Tokyo is not actually the place you want to go when you want to go to Tokyo. The place everyone's thinking of is. Sorry, so you see the old skyscrapers. The place you're all thinking of is called Shibuya. So my first mistake when I came to Japan was to go to Tokyo. Uh, but it's where the Imperial Palace is. So the Imperial Palace is down that street, and that's where the Shogun used to have his uh, boudoir and uh, do his stuff. So, um, however, I'm just about to get on a bullet train to Okayama, which is further down south. I'm off to see some old families down there. So, um, this is me just killing two hours so I'm gonna go bookshop things like that just killed an hour and a half in a cafe somewhere so uh, just waiting to get on the bullet train so um, and I shall be off to family but that's basically so it's that they've just done that building up um, they've just refurbished it like it's the same building but they've just I think sandblasted it and corrected the roof and all that right okay the uh, traffic going the brightest train in the world right guys I'm at Okayama sun's sort of going down if you like it's low shadows along and uh, I'm just on my next train going to meet Miyako at Miyako's house 
So uh, I keep falling asleep though. I'm on English time still and I keep falling asleep. Oh. We're at a train station and uh, they just got books for you to use. You wouldn't get that anywhere else in the world, I don't think. Train station, sit down board. Oh, I've got me a library. No one's going to rob it. You know what I mean? I don't even think it closes, to be fair. I don't even think it has a, a barrier. It's amazing, isn't it? I do love Japan for that type of thing. Right, I'm on a Japanese tram. I'm with Mirko. And we are just about to go down this line. I've not been in touch for about 15 hours. Uh, we are on our way to a radio station to get an interview about ninjas. And uh, basically the difference between the proper understanding of ninja and um, what what the Japanese have like put out if you know what I mean so uh, we're gonna do that which hopefully will go quite well but uh, we've got to do it in two languages so it's a little bit strange but um, we're, uh, we're off we're off we're off on a motor car let me show you how amazing Japan is right there's a leak from there and they've got signs saying it's leaking they've got a bucket but it's leaking over a grid <laughs> So they put a bucket over a grid, even though a grid's purpose is to take water away, and they've got a leak. How unbelievable is that for Japan? We're in um, Okayama. That's Okayama Castle. I think we filmed that last time I was here, so we're not going to uh, go in again. But the cherry blossoms, as you know, are out, and then the radio station's pretty much behind there at the moment. You should have just seen a, sorry the sun's in my eyes, you should have just seen a um, video, uh, sorry a photograph of me in the radio station, it was excellent, we just had uh, a little bit of a radio, it was about 10 minutes long and uh, we talked about the ninja and very easy stuff, very basic stuff because we had Mirko translating and me uh, just rabbiting on and they were all very interested but that's why I'm in Okayama so I've just done that, that was quite nice, now we're going to go back for a, uh, a restaurant all you can eat barbecue which I love it's so nice and Mirko's father takes me there every time I come here so I'm very very happy I've caught a cold guys I've that cold in the temperature in um, Tokyo basically gave me a bit of a cold but this is the room I've been living in this is Mirko's um, family home so uh, that's cool it's not as Japanese as you get I do always love coming here, they really treat me well. I've eaten so much, I'm gonna burst. I've put on about a stone in weight. Uh, but you know, that's the feed you don't they? So So we've got the uh generic ninja stuff. Oh they've added Yamabushi now. Um this is new. Right guys, this is um Akutagawa land. So this is the old land of the Akutagawa clan. So there you go. So I've got a few of their um, makimono. So this is where they were probably written, or at least you know the skills were based. So it's pretty damn good. We're back with Katoka-san, our Ichiban Koka guide. He's amazing as a guide. Basically, this is a, a looking out point on Koka. So we're at the heights of Koka. I think it's the highest point, and you can see all that, that over there is Wabata. Um, sorry, I'm not, I've, got, I've still got flu. Um, basically, Watanabe's house is over there, and there used to be an old castle over here, but there's all lots of this. This is Koka basically, and this is the fortified manor house. This used to be here, 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 really quite small. In fact, people don't realize how small these places are. Like over there, the mountain ridge is the end, it's not far away. You can walk like an half a day, it's like really not far away. So, uh, just so you're aware, of that, that behind us is the, uh, the old road out. So, so basically guys, they're still doing this crap, so ninja, ninja, we'll never get rid of it. So we've been to um, the, the main shrine here, the Ban territory is behind me, so um, the, wonderful, the building was from the, 17, uh, from the 1500s, however, we're in a race against time, so we're like literally going from point to point with about 30 seconds to spare each point. <laughs> So uh, it's a little bit confusing. So, uh, but there you go. We're just leaving Ban territory. Right, guys. Um, we've just spent about four hours with uh, the O'Hara family, and we've talked about their connection to the Ban family. Now, I was allowed to take as many pictures as I wanted. I took pictures of their lineage charts, their connection to the different Koga clans. 
Um, all of that has been taken. I took some pictures of the, and I got to see above all the original Bansen Shukai from the O'Hara family. So if you think about it this way, the um, the Bansen Shukai that we published was a kind of a combination of the O'Hara one and the um, one at the National Archives. So um, their parent and son, basically, in their um, transcription. So, but I got to see the original one, so which was really good. And I had a lovely chat to the older woman. However, she wants, obviously, to have a very private life. So it's very isolated and you have to be invite only. So, uh, which I'm very happy because um, Katoka-san just got us an invite there and sorted it out. I met some of... Um, the um, Kawakami students, uh, the Banto, the, uh, their, their students out there. I also met um, a guy called Tanisan who's connected to the Ego Research Group. So we met loads of people, put out loads of my um, business cards and chatted to him. And we had a great afternoon, talked about esoteric cosmology and all that. So um, we had good fun. So basically, networking, very, very good and looking at doing an event here hopefully next year something like that we don't know it's difficult in japan if you've never been to japan basically getting anything organized is difficult it took me like two years to get that afternoon you know i mean most people say can I come around the afternoon and you're done but it's taken two years to get that so but we got there in the end and it was well well worth it sitting down for eating is becoming a much rarer thing in japan i know i've whinged about this before but it's painful but it's japanese you know what i mean so it's quite nice to Find somewhere out in the countryside sticks where you just sit down. Old school. So I'm with the Miyoko, who's been wonderful, and uh, we're going to just eat. Right, Miyoko's gone home. Um, I am in. I'm in a hotel in Koka. It's the grimmest place you've ever seen. This is disgusting. It is filthy. The carpets are filthy. It's probably about 40 years old. The curtains. It's just minging. And the, the staff were like, eh, eh. It's like, okay. You know, they're polite, but not quite, you know, everything normal in Japan is pristine and everybody's bowing. They're just like, eh. no, no. So it's just like, okay. This is possibly the second grimmest hotel I ever stayed in. The first grimmest one was in Shiki, and that was just horrific. <laughs> Actually, it was cleaner than this one, but it was just horrible as a hotel. Um, but this is minging. We'll get a bath. The bath's not got cockroaches in it. There you go, guys. The mountains of Coca. I am smack bang, pretty much in the middle of Coca. The sun is going down. It's only about six, seven o'clock. Um, but there you go. That's where this is where everybody was. We went round today. There was so many. He took us exactly where all the old castles were, the mansions. He knows everything. Uh, Katoka san, he talks a lot like bah, 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 you can you know, he lets you stop for about 10 seconds to take a picture of the signboard, then you're back in the car and off. But uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to family's connection, which is good. So, there you go, guys. Uh, to be fair, in Koka, there's just no tourism, it's like they've got the, the broken down ninja village, which is a nightmare of a place to be honest. It's really quite you know run down and horrific uh, they do have a lovely collection of um, scrolls though you know in the on display but coming to coca you need a local you need a local to take you around otherwise uh, you know you're not really going to get anywhere there's no trains beyond that's the station and then once you get out of the station which is see where that white building is there that's about it that's the end there you go. <coughs> you could what, knock on for Mrs. Jones and have a cup of tea. That's about it. That's about as much ninja stuff as you're going to get, to be fair. So they really, really need that. I was speaking to the guys today and I was like, you need to get on with some, you know, tourism, which they are trying to do. But I mean, and it is difficult because you need cash and to get cash, you need tourism. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle. But you get the idea. Right, guys, still a bit full of cold. Um, <coughs> it's pretty much the next day. <coughs> and, um,. I'm in Iga and I'm waiting to go into my hotel but I've got like two and a half hours to kill. So I've come up to the Iga Ueno Museum and I'm trying not to be negative. I try my best not to be negative anymore about these places. But nothing has changed in 12 months. 12 months, zero. Oh, sorry, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. What they have done very well 
is uh, put some signs on the train station now because the train's quite difficult to get. You've got to get like three separate trains to get to this station and they're changing over lines. So uh, if you don't really know your way around Japan or Japanese train stations, it can be a little bit, you know, and especially here in the sticks, it's all in Japanese. So tourists get quite stuck. Um, you pretty much need a guide. However, it's all been changed to English, which is superb. Uh, it's still got crappy ninjas on it, like, see a ninja this way. But it does genuinely, like, bang, come this way. So they've done that. So in one year, they've put, like, five signs up on the train platform. Uh, you know, um, as I say, nothing's changed still. You know, it's either kids fantasy ninja. It's not even, like, I don't mind fantasy, I don't mind tourism. But it's, it's either... Like, totally incorrect kids' fantasy, which is fine, as I say. But then totally incorrect adult historical stuff, and as, as it was last time, and nothing has changed. Not a single bit. So it's a little bit off-putting. What we're on, like, about... The, the university's been going for, what, five years now? Four years? No, five years, yeah. And nothing's changed in five years. That's a bit embarrassing, though, isn't it? But I'll stop there because this channel's not really for that. But my point is, is do be aware when you come to Ega, it says come here for the real ninja. It's not here. It's the fantasy or the incorrect information with the shuriken and all that. So uh, hopefully I can spend a couple of days here, but I'm going to sleep off this cold. To be fair, guys, I'm probably not going to do much beyond. <laughs> hopefully I'll be meeting Kawakawi Sensei, but he's, he, one of his friends has died, so he's had to go to a funeral, so we've had to rearrange. So I may be meeting up with Kawakawi Sensei, which I hope, because I do enjoy his company. I do enjoy chatting to him. Should be quite nice. I have my wonderful assistant. <laughs> I have my wonderful <laughs> assistant <laughs> driving me around <laughs> superbly. Has come and picked me up from my hotel and is taking me on a wonder tour of Iga to find out just what it was like to, to compare the landscape between um, Koka and Iga, look at the old roads out of there, and try to work out whoa, just a bit more about Iga instead of just going to the city every time. So she's kindly driving me around. <laughs> I would just like to show you this extremely accurate description of the Mizugumo. <laughs> no, I'm just at some temple. Hold on a minute, let me get some information for you guys. I'm in um, the shrine, guys, and you know how they have bells normally. So this is the shrine of um, Fujibayashi, or close to Fujibayashi's family, allegedly. Uh, you have to say that with all of these, because the signs are a little bit dubious. But however, they used to make, apparently they used to make um, fire, uh, Noroshi here basically, fire rockets and um, signals and things like that. And this is the, uh, the bell that you normally ring. Have you seen the size of it? And the bells there, you've got to give it a good whack, but basically it's massive. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty impressive, that's quite cool actually. Right guys, what's becoming very obvious very quickly is the fact that Koka is much more mountainous. And by mountainous, I mean small ones, like these small mountains. That we're actually in Iga, but just over there is Koka. So the idea I'm saying is, you see, you cut away those trees, and originally samurai houses used to be on these small mountains and uh, with defence and fortified. And you can see all the sort of moats and the the embankments you can see are all there and that's where the houses used to be but Iga is such a massively flat plain it's so different to Koka quite different actually so uh, it's quite easy to see the difference in the landscape that's what I'm here for today is to get a difference in landscape so it's been it's quite interesting with my amazing um, guide <laughs> She's been wonderful, actually. She's been very, very good. <laughs> right, guys, we've left off from Iga and we're now in Nara. If you can see the background, we've come. there's a plum festival on. We've missed the actual main festival, all the plum stuff's still out. And uh, some old shops selling tea. It's really nice. <laughs> we're just discussing how difficult it is to find green tea in Japan unless you sit down in a shop. So uh, here's the view. Oh, so it's hard to see on camera. But there you go, guys, it's beautiful. Right guys, just so you're aware, we're right close to Yagyu. I'm coming to Yagyu in a few days, but I don't know if it's that direction or that direction. We're not sure, we've done a few turns and twists, but basically on one side is Yagyu. And this is when we're talking about Shinkagi Ryu and all that. 
the Aegyu Shinkagi Ryu, and obviously they're going to Tokyo, but this is the area they came from, and this is where uh, the uh, all the sort of swordsmanship was done there, and hopefully I'll be visiting it soon. So just to be aware, that's the landscape of the Yagyu area. Right, guys, we are in... Um, I'm in Iga still. The, uh, the cold is going now. We're getting less and less, but it's time... Uh, we're in an old samurai house. It's been refurbished, as you can see, so I'm not sure how much of it's original, but it's an eager samurai's house. I'm just going to look at the information and see how much... I think I've been in here before, and I think I've videoed it before, but I may as well go through it again, because uh, it was many years ago. Right, that's the back garden there, she's uh, saying to me. And the uh, that is the main garden there. However, it's a rebuild, obviously, with all the electric in, but the point is it's been rebuilt. We're just not sure when. We'll work that out in a bit, uh, but I think it's allegedly in the same style as the original. So when you're thinking about, it says originally 1600s, I think, 16, 1624 to 1644. Hmm. But um, obviously it's been rebuilt since then. So, but this is in the style of. Right, I'm just having a great lesson. Ugu Isu is a type of bird, and I've heard of it before, but I'm not very good at bird calls. And the guy that I'm with, the guy that I'm with there, is just telling me that she can recognise the bird calls, but she says the young one has not been trained yet, and that its bird call is not correct, and it's still under training, and she can identify the older bird and the younger bird, and the training that's going on. That is mint. <laughs> we've sort of lost that, really, in the UK. I don't know about you guys in the US, but we've definitely lost that. I'm in a kimono shop. That's very nice. So, it's a kimono shop in Iga, basically, if you're just joining me. <laughs> um, and it backs on to an old garden. How cool is that? That is pretty mint. We've come to, like, a storeroom in the back. It's really quite interesting, actually. Um, there's lots of... <coughs> I've given my guide my cold. It's been coughing everywhere all over, so I do apologise. Um, <coughs> uh, there's loads of cool stuff, though. But I always feel a little bit embarrassed when I'm the only one in the shop. Everybody's looking at it like, buy something. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure. No. Well, basically, the roof has fell in on this one. Let me just back up for you guys. So the roof has fell in through there. I mean, obviously it's too dark, but you get the idea. So yeah, it's been blocked off. Oh, that's a shame, but shows you what happens if you don't look after it. It just falls. That's pretty cool, actually. That's the storehouse we were in there. And the door's actually, I think, lead or copper, I'm not sure. It's very heavy anyway. Let's see if I can get a light on it. You can see there. I found this child. I'm keeping it. Hmm. <laughs> I'm keeping it. So, I'm eating in this wonderful little place, and uh, I have to pour all that in there. And I put that stuff in there with the wasabi and everything. And I've got my dessert. It's all pretty good, actually. It's pretty nice. Look at this, guys, for wonderful. Hold on. It's like a little Aladdin's cave of mintness. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That is one of the better ones I've seen, actually. It's really good. So basically, guys, we're in a... Uh, it's We're just inside that house. It's an old hotel, but it's now just open to the public. As a public building and sort of like local centre. Pretty damn cool, actually. Sensei and Fyodor, eager researcher who's Russian, 
and I've had a great, great, great night. And uh, we had a, a long conversation, which was very nice. And um, amazing, the guys. He's just given me four of the 18 chapters of Gunzo Yodoki. So we didn't get the complete scroll, but he says he, he can't, just can't find the other volumes at the moment in his collection. So he's copied what he could find and brought it along for us. So, and the one volume is the one we all want, is the Shinobi volume. So we have just technically got the last bit of the Shinobi information for Natoru Ryu. And um, on top of that, he brought another scroll, which was one I didn't even know existed. And it was the extra Kuden for uh, that, that set, you know, Gunzo Yodoki, that section of scroll. So we still don't have the complete scroll, but we've got the um, scouting uh, chapter, the Shinobi chapter, the siege chapter. Um, it just, it look, it's mint. And then on top of that, we've got the Kuden for the whole 18 chapters. It's quite short, but it's there. Um, and we ju I just didn't know it existed. Um, well, I've seen, uh, you know what I mean? I thought it was the same scroll, but it's apparently a different scroll on top to add to that scroll. So everything seems to be going well. So it's been a great, great night for Natoru Ryu. And well worth the trip. The illness. And, and I think there's a lot of good things coming from Kawakami at the moment. I think he's, he's you know, definitely changed beat and moving up to a new level, which is great. And it's, you know, try to get historical ninjutsu out there. So um, obviously that's for them not to decide what they're going to do properly or tell you guys. Because um, the conversations are conversations, you know what I mean? But yeah. I think you're going to be enjoying the next few years, especially as well from we've got the now the complete Natori Ninja collection. So we're there, we're done. Mint. Right, guys, we're back at the. Um, I don't know if you remember it, it's the Eager Tea House. So, um, so I don't know if you remember, or you can see that. But basically, the Eager Tea House is there. So, all very nice. We're going to have some. Japanese tea and some Japanese sweets. So basically we're in Yagyu territory now. So um, just driving in, very kindly being driven by my guide. And uh, that is Yagyu territory. It's excellent, actually. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yagyu? We're into sort of Yagyu Valley, I think, going off the sat nav here. Um, that is pretty mint. I'm going to study some, uh, only from a book, but I'm going to start reading some Yagyu Shinkagiryu see where we get to. Right guys, we are smack bang in, bang in the middle of Yagyu village. So uh, it's uh, it's really beautiful actually. It's really, really quite nice, but it's a bit, or you know, we've got to go around corners and up and down, but you can't quite see everything because of the buildings. But it is very, very nice. This is where the Yagyu family are. They've got the, as well, the, <coughs> the Yagyu graves of there. So, um, and we're a bit up there at the so I can see that in a bit. Look at this for cool guys, we're going across a, a red bridge with a sakura tree in the back in the middle of Yagyu village. That's about as cool as it gets really, isn't it? Right guys, that is the Shinkagiryu Dojo is there. It's actually called Masaki or something, Masaki Dojo. And uh, <coughs> we're at quite high up. Uh, but I'm just looking for the times, but there's no times at the minute. No sort of notice board. Right, up there, guys, it says, uh, just on this little sandwich out of view here, this is the main house for the Yagyu um, area, basically. So that was a sort of fortified manor house. If you want to think about back in the old days, these Sengoku period, I'm not saying that Sengoku period is not, but my point is, is that, or, you know, that build is not. Um, the point is, is that, 
you're not looking at huge castles you're looking at fortified walls with those uh, you know walls or embankments with the small walls on the top and it talks about this in the Tories documents it says they're only about five or six feet high sometimes seven feet high depending on the but they go on top of long tall walls and that's the point it's making so you're not expecting these big pagoda style castles that's what you're looking at when you're thinking of um, houses in the sort of Eager and Coker area and you know the Sengoku period they're more like that Right guys, um, I know it's not been the most exciting video this because I'm taking all those videos myself but um, basically I'm in the middle of Yagyu village I've just been to the dojo but it's closed so I'm going to see if I can go back tonight um, it's getting hot um, just getting over the cold, we're doing alright I think we're getting better um, I'm just sat outside now with a bottle of Bukhari sweat sounds nice <laughs> to be honest it's actually quite nice and um Yagyu yeah, village, good. It does. You don't really need to stay here overnight. To be fair, it'd be all right with a group of you, where you could go sit up in the, on the sort of pl plateau where they've got all the sakura trees, the cherry blossoms, and chill out at night with friends. But you don't necessarily have to stay. I could have literally. The guide who's helping me, she's so good. She's just been helping me around. She said you could have just stayed back at your hotel and I'd have driven you here, come round for a few hours and driven you back. So next time, I think we're going to do that. Um, but this is exactly where the Yagyu family were doing their stuff. And remember, for Nato Ryu students, Yagyu uh, were the official swordsmen to the, and teachers to the Shogunate. And remember, the Shogunate is um, I have connected, of course, to Kishu Tokugawa because they're the Tokugawa clan. So, uh, yeah, mm. so it's, it's part of the Natori history. It's not directly there, and we don't know which sword school Isu Sensei practiced, but there's a high possibility that it could have been uh, Yagyu Shinkai Ryu, um, just because of the connection to the Tokugawa family, but that's just speculation, nothing more. Uh, but it's worth coming just to check out. Anyway, so yeah, here I am. So this is the uh, Yagyu. Um, house. Here you go guys, that's about as middle of the view as you can get. That's the house we've just been in, the original. So that's, this is the main pretty much house there in the village. That is a 360. It's pretty small to be honest. It goes down there, there's like the shopping area down there, there's the a shop. Do you know what I mean? But it's definitely quieter than I expected. I thought it might have been a little bit bigger now, obviously. Tire, you know, and it was a small domain at the time. So yeah, I expected a little bit bigger, but it's very nice. Right everyone, it's uh <coughs> you just get moons out, there we go. <coughs> Stairs up to the dojo. Um, lovely little bamboo forest on the side. I'm going to uh, make my way up there. I'm a bit worried that I think it, the lesson has finished. There was no lesson times and there was nothing on the internet. Uh, my guide, who's gone home now, um, has tried looking. But I think you have to inquire in advance and, and all this malarkey. You know, you know the score. So um, I've just come down to see, have a few questions about Yagyu Shinkagi Ryu, so I thought I'd just, you know, see if I could hit a dojo time. Usually times are on boards and things like that, aren't they? But seems not, but I've just seen somebody walking away with a sword bag, so I'm hoping I've not just missed it. Uh, the, <coughs> <coughs> the dojo's closed up at the moment, but I'm walking down the really cool road that we're on before, and it's lovely dark, it's just getting that dusk moment. We've got the red bridge, we've got the um, darkened bamboo foresty wood, and we've got the pathway to one of the older dojos in Japan, or one of the most prestigious older dojos in Japan. 
how cool is that guys next to a river as you can see it's a really nice evening shame you notorious guys are not here with me see that tree up there guys this is called Jubei's tree so you know Yagyu Jubei um, apparently it's 350 years old or older it's been struck by lightning a few times but uh, this is the, the sort of graveyard I think of um, what's it called the um, Yagyu family and it says here it says that uh, <coughs> he was given um, a mission by the government to go around now if you if you've looked into Yagyu basically it goes missing from the record for a few years so it's assumed he went on a, a sort of sort of internal spying mission uh, but allegedly or so legend according to this legend has that he planted this tree there um, to honor his ancestors when he went on his journey and that is now 350 years old or whenever from the time he went obviously the sign will be a few years old so uh, I never knew that that's quite cool obviously whether he did or he didn't you know, he's down to legend but that is pretty good that's pretty cool right everyone I've just been speaking to the owner and uh, it turns out that the dojo may only be a kendo dojo. I might have misunderstood her a bit, but basically it seems like that's kendo only. And uh, there's no more Yagyu Shinkagiryu in Yagyu Village. What? Yagyu Village no longer has Yagyu Shinkagiryu is what she was saying. Let's see if check myself before I wreck myself. <laughs> that is shocking. That is like 12,000 volts shocking. You wouldn't want that. That's ridiculous. If that's true, that is a tragedy. Tragedy. Yeah, we're all there. We're all singing it. I've just come down. It's the morning. I've just come down to Kisagi train station. Look at that for beautiful. So I've just left Yagyu village. Uh, the hotel have given me a lift down and the difference it's only like a five eight minute drive and he says like the the valley is colder there uh, at Yagyu than it is here he says it's quite hot here and this is the borderland between Kyoto uh, and Nara so he says basically if you'd have gone the other way I'd have been in Nara and I've come this way I'm in Kyoto so obviously not Kyoto city but the difference in cherry blossom is outstanding. Look at that for just mint. It's possibly in almost 100% there. Back five, eight minutes ago, it was about 4%. Literally nothing was budding. So the difference is colossal. That is outstanding. How peaceful is this, guys? I'm not sure if you can show up there's a river down there. And people just drive the cars on and camp. Or mint under the uh, cherry blossoms under the mountains next to a river. Yeah, that's pretty much the life. One day I'm going to make a book on these. They're so funny. These Japanese sort of um, <coughs> anime, not animated, but manga, you know, cartoon esque um, warning boards. So no selfie sticks or you will die a horrific death. Sorry, it's not focusing. Her face is amazing. Look at that. You'll get 25,000 volts of pure mintness. Look at that. And don't fall over anywhere, just in case you die. And oi, don't bang, bang into young women. She's gutted that he's not looking at her. She's like, oi, look at me. I've dressed sexy for you, gentlemen. You're not looking. <laughs> Why is it the man's fault in everything here? As if it's the man with a selfie stick. You know what I mean? This is ridiculous. I've never ever seen, I don't think I've seen a, you know, a couple with a man with a selfie stick. I'm not sure, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just England, but I've never seen one. That guy, I don't know, he's angry at something. Or he's shouting at him, don't die of electrocution. I'm not sure what he's gonna do about it. <laughs> right guys, I am in um, Shikoku now. I've arrived and uh, I'm just having a gander at these uh, bonsai. So, uh, very, very nice. And I'm just about to go around the park, which is pretty splendid to be fair. So, uh, <coughs> I'm going to enjoy it.
These are pretty cool. Got its waterproof paper with light bulbs in. So it lights up at night. I'm going to show you the different types of cherry blossom. As you can see on this one, this tree, it's very, very red behind and it comes up pink when it's ready. Sorry guys, it's not quite focusing. But then if you move over to this next one, the branch over this side, they're all totally almost white. And as you, if I move back, you can see that's the extremely white one. That's it, more pink one. Uh, white and pink. So there's lots of different types of cherry blossoms. I don't know what these types are, but um, it's just, you know, there are a few different types you can get. It's really quite interesting, actually. I'd like to go through it all. tea house in the garden. That is extremely nice for a tea house, isn't it? So I read the info of the garden, basically. It was the feudal lord's garden for all the Edo period. And uh, I think I've missed tea time. However, there you go, guys, for ninjutsu. This is in the Bantan Shukai. It says, how are these? You basically roll them out and put them in at night. There you go. And they all slot away. people don't see that you know the, um, these actually come out say the, there's a little hidden usually inside of sorry I can't see this is inside of sorry guys I've zoomed in I can't see my finger now there we go inside of this sort of stuff you'll see I bring more out in a minute there you go and they just whap them out of that and that's the storage for it basically they just run on the on the shutters. Banton Chusai talks about them. The second series of doors. I don't remember the name off by hand, so I better not guess at it. But there, and that's what he talks about when you've got to push and press and check. And that is when you at night lock up um, and you put the locking sticks behind them. Remember, just because it's been in the Banton Chukai doesn't mean Natori wouldn't be totally understanding of all this. This is general Japanese um, culture. So as you can see, you get that storage. Out they come, and they all lock together, and what happens is, then, the final one will go there. There you go. There you go. Then, um, she'll lock that now, with a locking stick, which will go across the bottom. And that's what uh, Fujibayashi Sensei talks about, when you've got to drill it out and bid in, and then you can start sliding these things open. Uh, and there she goes, she's been doing loads more. But well, that's it, they do the entire house with a shield. It's literally a shield for the house. Oh guys, look at that for cherry blossoms. That is awesome. <laughs> I've just tried to get into um, Takamatsu Castle Ruins Park, but it's nearly closed. It's only a small fee. But uh, it's pretty much closed for the evening in the next 20. Sorry guys, my uh, internet interrupted that. Uh, so, get but I'm at the seaside, that's it, that's the end. So, um, I must admit though, personally, I love the sea more than, than anywhere else. Uh, I live about 25 minutes from the sea at the moment, but I need to live next to the sea. See the islands out there, have a little boat, whip her about, that, that's the dream. But, um, for those have a quick look at Takamatsu Castle uh, in Shikoku and the history I think if I remember rightly it involves uh, flooding tactics and water so uh, and hence that's how close the water is whether it was that this has obviously been remade it might have been a bit further out but the water is not far from uh, Takamatsu Castle so I'm just gonna have a wander down the coastline and see if there's anything here but I think it's like everything else I think it closes down at five six o'clock doesn't it and it's time to just return to the hotel room That is mint. The sun is going down. Shikoku Island. Look up if you want Takamatsu on the map. And the mist over the uh, the sort of hills coming out of the sea. That is pretty impressive. Symbol Tower, I think it's called. Guys, 
at this guy, a uh, guy's a building board, so they're doing some structural work. It's got lights going all the way down it. I have never seen that before. That's pretty cool. So you know, usually it's just strip light like, but that's pretty pretty good. Obviously, you know, construction work behind. I don't know what it's there for, like no cars are driving down here. So okay guys, right, it is uh, the next day. I am at Kochi Castle, so K-O-C-H-I. I'm just about to go in. <laughs> um, just have a look at some of the old statues here. So uh, allegedly this is one of the original castles. I'll find out more when I go in there. But let's have a look. As always guys, let's have a look at the strategic. So there's the uh, gun port. You can see the difference between probably an arrow port and a gun port, one being small and round, one being a bit longer and thinner. But, you know, not wholly gonna be. We're in the um, killing zone. So that's the main gate. That's the entrance. And if you look, probably that road there is new and probably that's the older one because if you're meant to come in at an angle like that. You're always meant to come in. That probably once upon a time was blocked off. So you come in. You get shot at from all these sides and you've got that gate and the viewing port to look at from um, above so remember guys start putting this together right guys I'm making my way up to the castle so coming up through another as you can see layered section you're in basically in a crossfire from all sections here I'm from very very tall it's extremely tall Right guys, <coughs> it says here we're in Nino Maru second, so there's the main keep up there, but this is Nino Maru, the second enclosure, and what uh, they were saying is, uh, on the board over there, it says that originally there was buildings here, and the Lord used to live here in this residence, so um, what people, a lot of people don't realise, and, it, and it, I had to remember it a few times, is people don't live in castles, they live in residences. You know, a lot of the times you retreat to a main keep. This is a citadel, remember. So you actually retreat to the main keep in times of problem. There's the doors from the other guy, the other night guys. You see how the storage room outside, you pull them out. Put them in the runs, so it's a bit bright, and off you go down here. This is difficult to see, guys, but vastly important. Can you see the um, the gun slit there? And can you see the um, gun slit there? Now this is what in that tour review is about the gun, the um, the viewing section above. It means you can view out and tell people where to aim. You can also shoot out of these, but the point is that you can see properly and say, right, you need to be shooting left guy, shoot left. So somebody's looking out there as a lookout and somebody's out there shooting. And the idea is they work together in tandem so you can get a proper look at what's going on at the enemy because it's too little there. See, this is what Andrew Throwburn should be doing. Not running the organization through administration. He should be building this. Come on, Throwburn, sorry out. You're falling behind. There you go, guys, I'm at the top. That's pretty damn high, actually. So there you come in, so let's have a look at it. Most likely we have come up here, shift through there, you've got to go around there, up there, past that point, through there, sorry, through there, up there, back around, possibly one of these. So and you can all back that way. So basically you just as we've shown you in the past in the seminars we've done, it's a snaking pass to try and get past and all the way you can lob stuff from here, lob stuff from up there, lob stuff from there, throw stuff from there, shoot things from there. You see the point, it's always concentric circles going upwards with ever cho ever increasing choke points basically. Right guys, I've gone down a level. And uh, just, to, I'm, I'm like third from the top. And you know those things you get out, of, quite interesting this board. Those things you get outside on the, the, the slanted roofs outside with the windows in. That's the inside of the window there. 
and basically it's closed up there but there's one on each of the four corners and I think it says there's one behind there but because uh, there's a corridor here that goes around and the idea in, is that these are actually stone, more stone throwing ports and that's how they originated so you would lob stuff out of there from all four sides of the castle which of course is around there I think when you can get there but uh, oh, I think I've just broke something so, um... Right guys, I'm at the next castle, you can't see it, it's just up there. So I'm at the next castle, I'll uh, take you around it. It's been about two hours since the last one, I've been on a train and uh, got some dinner and everything and I'm going to go see how this one's like. So where are we going, chaps? There you go, guys. You can see again the road is off kilter, so one and then across. In reality, there's about a metre difference. And uh, probably most likely that new road is widened. So you've got this uh, Z idea again. It's always the same, always the same. Just because it works, it's a standard. So uh, again, gun ports, Yagura. In we go, same as always, we've got the square defence with the killing zone and then you have to turn at a right angle to go through. Right guys, it was a tall climb, <coughs> it's, been, <coughs> excuse me. it's a tall climb that, it's pretty damn high. We're starting to recognise this stuff, Sandomaru, the third enclosure, things like that, so we're getting close to the top. <coughs> <coughs> the walls are massive. These are small ones. Down there is massive. So uh, let's crack on. Right guys, I've just been in the uh, main turret. Um, it's a small one and I don't want to bore you to death by filming everything. So, uh, but yeah. so I've come all the way up, gone through all the same as we did in the other castle. But uh, <coughs> just look at the information isn't there, but I'll double check it when I get one. But apparently yeah, Mirko's put me on the trek today to see original castles, not rebuilding. It does look like an original. So, uh, but you know, it might just be really well rebuilt. But there's no info on it at the moment, so I'm going to have to check the old uh, interweb when I get back. So, uh, right guys, enjoy. Basically here, because we saw out the way of things in pure Japanese, which is too difficult for me, um, to try and get the date. So yeah, that's what we're up to. Right, I'm going to go back to the train station, and I'll probably either see you later on tonight or tomorrow. Still the same day, guys, but I've just got into Takamatsu Park. I've, it's now ten past five, and it shuts in 50 minutes, so it was only a couple of dollars to get in. So uh, <coughs> I'll come and have a quick gander around. I should be done within 40, 50 minutes, so cool. So I'll see if there's anything here to, to film, but I've just been and had my hair chopped, so uh, I was a bit later back. Right, guys, I'm pretty much nearly done here. As you can see, there's the beautiful big building behind me. Uh, the castle is a rebuild. Can I get that in? No, it's just there. Just there. It's a one Yagura turret. It's a rebuild. Um, but very nice. It's very beautiful. The garden is beautiful. Everything is very nice here. So, um, and it was the, it was just telling me all the, sorry, excuse me, uh, the family history. I've just been going through all that of the people who owned it, like 11 generations, etc. Uh, the amount of koku they were on. And then uh, it talks about um, how the samurai here were taught to swim and they had to have special lessons in swimming. And to this day, they do carry on the school. Probably one of the same schools we've seen on uh, YouTube. So, uh, but uh, being the arts of swimming, which we all know, Natori absolutely talks about. And we do have a full manual on water. Uh, Susen no Yoho. So, uh, just going around other buildings at the moment, as you can see, beautiful bridges, stone lanterns, all that type of stuff. Right then, speak to you later. All right, guys, it's midday. Next day, uh, I have come to a very rural place, very rural, and I'm here to try to find the last Natoru Dojo. So let's see if I can find it. I've got a map to where it is. I'm going to try and see if I can get inside, but I very much doubt it, but at least I'm going to try. It's like the fourth or fifth time I've tried to get access to it, but I can't. 
can't, so let's see if we can uh, try it just by knocking on the door. Right guys, it's got to be quiet, but I found it. But this is not good. This is the last dojo. Inside there are six documents we need, but and I can't get all of the oldness to come down and meet me. We ain't gonna find him in there without a few hours searching and without somebody who knows where they are. But there are allegedly tons of documents in there. And as I say, we've got, hold on. <coughs> one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Natorio documents. So we're looking at, um, uh, what is it? So we're looking at the missing scroll, possibly a Mokoroku of fighting techniques, all sorts of stuff, and just can't get it. Basically, guys, I'm at a dead end. No, it's not a dead end, so to say, but I know they're right there. <coughs> the door's not open. <coughs> the door is there. Where are they? Do you know what I mean? They'll be buried under. The stuff rubble is falling in on it. There's dust. If you look through the windows, there's dust everywhere. You know. I had a quick gander through the windows and all that. Was... If that isn't saved soon, and so this is the problem. The problem is, is the the late Mr. Takeda has died. He's a dead. He's dead now. That's the man who studied the arts, and we we don't know if it's a practicing dojo, but we definitely know it has Natoru Mokoroku in there, and the family studied Natoru. But what we um, and it's got certificates. They've got scrolls we don't have, and it's literally falling to pieces. The rain will be in there very soon, and all that history, and including not just Natoru, there's lots of other documents there. And do you know what? The the sister and brother who now own it, the brother says he can't be asked talking to us, doesn't care about scrolls, so please don't bother him. And the sister says the brother actually owns a house where she can't do anything, and but he won't talk to us. So it is just right there, Natoru history is being destroyed day by day and they basically said can't be asked it's bit, you know it's not as if they, we're going to pay them if they want they don't have to do anything if they have to do anything we'd pay for them to come down we'd put them up in hotels not that they have to they just apparently the local area just need to say yeah let them in that'll be fine and we could go through it but nothing you know, japanese people can be really difficult sometimes really really difficult annoyingly but the worst bit is this is like there's no benefit from it they don't benefit we don't benefit, history doesn't benefit, everybody loses out, they could be paid money, we could, you know, get a film crew here and go search them. It's just basically one of those bits where you get in Japanese society where you're like, come on, you know, somebody do something, but nobody wants to do anything because it's nobody's responsibility. So I'm here, the non-Japanese speaking guy, trying to look into houses and get there and things. Because other people are like, oh, I can't do it. It's not my role. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Just start banging on them doors and get them open. Does me nothing. So anyway, that's my rant, but deservedly so, I think. Right, guys, I've got a pretty heavy bag. And I've just walked from all the way down there, all the way across here, across the bridge, zooming up, and then I'm pretty damn high. It's like a hotel castle. It's like pretty much Castle Dracula. But um, I adjust. I'm here. I am very happy to be in the house. And that's it. I'm going to sit here for about 20 minutes and let my feet calm the dune. Hey guys. I'm in a place called Tokushima, so look at the island of Shikoku, and there's a place called Tokushima. I'm pretty much there now. In fairness, I'm, I'm floating around for a couple of days now because there's not really much to do. I've done the, tried to get the documents. I've seen Kawakami Sensei to get the other documents. So now I'm just waiting to go to Wakayama, which uh, I've got a day, so sort of. I should have just gone straight to Wakayama, to be honest, but um, I'm in Tokushima um, here. So let's see what there is about. I might get a bus trip somewhere, but basically it's a day off. So uh, not much to report, but just thought I'd let you in the loop. So uh, I'll, if, if I come across anything, I'll let you know. Well, I've gone full on tourist, guys. 
and I'm getting a, a sort of a boat to uh, look at some whirlpools in the water. So uh, apparently it's one of the fastest whirlpool boats in the world, according to the advert. And um, it's got a, an observation deck. So uh, I'm going to go on that. It's called Aqua Eddie. So, and it, it's, sorry, hold on. So we're about to go in about 10 minutes. So let's have a look at some whirlpools. I'm in the, uh, the ship. And uh, we're going to go underwater, I think. Well, you know what I mean, we're going to see underwater. So uh, it's pretty cool. Hold on. So these are the whirlpools here. Enjoy it now, guys. Put the phone down. Right, I'm in um, a museum back in Tokushima, and here's a <laughs> Daimyo's parade, which is pretty cool. Remember, uh, not the, quite the same, but um, Natoru talks about how to parade in two lines. Do you remember? He talks about how to get there, and here's all your markers at the top. This is more just a, a civilian, not civilian, but do you know what I mean? A parade in peace times. He talks mainly about wartime. Andrew Throckburn's being lazy again. Not creating the right models of Wakayama for us. He does no work. He's a bad man. Pretty cool model, that, isn't it? Pretty, pretty good. We really could do with one of Wakayama, to be fair. Right, guys, I've just climbed to the top of Tokushima Castle. It's pretty damn big. It's quite high, to be honest, quite high. But this is the very top where the keep would have been. But obviously all gone now, probably just walls around the edges, uh, depending on the age of the castle. But all the cherry blossoms are out and it's pretty much cherry blossom Sunday now. It's the main day, the main weekend I should say. Oh, it looks like there's a well over there as well. So, excellent. Yep, this is Tokushima Castle, I think I'm going to call it. So I've done the whirlpools today, um, the museum, the castle. The whirlpools was good, but it was a long way away for a short thing. So... Uh, you can see is the moat down there. God, it is a big castle, this. It really is. Here you go, guys. One of the best times in Japan, literally. Problem is I'm here on my own this time, which is a shame. Normally, when you've got people with you, this is awesome. Like last Natori trip, we had uh, James, um, Paul and Peter. Excuse me. <laughs> James, Paul and Peter. And we sat and chilled out like this. It was very, very nice. Very nice. Right, I'm going to call it quits and go um, get some food and then a bath, so I'll see you in the morning. Right guys, it's, um, it's the next morning and I'm taking a ferry across to Wakayama. This is the first time I've ever seen this, but uh, instead of chairs, they have Japanese style ferry sitting points. People sit down in them. That is mint. That must mean it's an old ferry when they were like, you know, everybody sat on the floor. And because uh, probably it's built in the 80s or something like that. Uh, so literally, there isn't a seating arrangement, there's just sit on the floor where you can it. I mean, actually, I like it. I'm well impressed. You alright guys, I'm on the ferry. <laughs> I'm outside Tobaganda. This is an uh, average Japanese port. Uh, mountains are off to Wakayama. So we uh, then get the old uh, train further in. Right guys, I'm in Wakayama. Okay, uh, I know a lot of people know that I have uh, issues with the Japanese culture in the sense of, you know, it can be really difficult to, to try to get to do what you want to do because of the way it's set up. However, I would like to take this opportunity to say, 
they are one of the most helpful people in the world. I want to make sure you, you know that about the Japanese. So, they go beyond and above, basically above and beyond, to help you. They really do. And in return, I've always helped Japanese tourists back in the UK because from the day one, they were very helpful. Like, for example, just getting off the ferry there, uh, there's a bus system and two buses come and they both go to two different train stations. So I have to make sure I get the right one, but they're very close, sort of like, in their names. So um, the woman is literally the train station staff comes out and makes sure I'm on the right bus. She doesn't need to, and she's not connected to the bus company. So what she does it, and it's so nice. So I just wanted to share that with you. For all the problems you get in Japan with research, the, genu the general public are very, very helpful. Hi everyone. Okay, we're going to look at <coughs> registered students. So those students who've registered and you are going to get signed into the uh, temple, I'm going to show you now just exactly what that means. So your registration fees, 50% will come here and this is what happens. So um, this is the book, this is the temple book and it will stay here. It is uh, going to be written in by Yamamoto-san and this is going to be the record kept for all time in the temple. The temple, sorry, the school history will be there like this is a brand new edition of the school. And that is the introduction. Sorry guys, I've got to hold my phone. But as you can see here, these are the people's names. So there's Anthony, Andrew, uh, David <coughs> and James, the first four. So your number will go there. Then what's going to happen is you're going to put your thumbprint there. And then this will be kept for all time in the temple and it'll go on at the moment we're up to 94 uh, and it will go on for all time until the next one and then um, <coughs> excuse me and then your names will be kept in the temple for each and every generation so if you're interested in registering please register but at the minute I'm going to put my thumbprint on it oh, cool. uh. Ah, yeah, let's move that. Just move it. Name. Hmm? What do you want? More. Eat this. Hi. 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 <coughs> right, guys, so I'm going to put my thumbprint um, underneath my name. So we're going to put it here. Actually, I'm going to cook it. Yeah. So we're going to put it here. So, first of all, I'm going to check. Yeah. Hi. Perfect. So if you visit the temple, you can put your thumbprint inside of it, and then each person who comes, so when you come, Yamamoto-san will ask you your number. He'll say, what is your number? I'll say, my number is number one. And the next person who comes will say, what's your name? Antony Cummins. So he will just check the number and the name, then he will point and you put your thumbprint. And that will stay forever. So then what's gonna happen now is Yamamoto-san will write the date that I came. I can't really see it guys, it's not focusing, it's focusing on the window at the front but uh, basically uh, Wakayama Castle is lit up blue sorry guys, it keeps focusing on the uh, lift as opposed to the castle but there you go anyway Right guys, I've just been for dinner with um, Ikeda Sensei from Tamiya Ryu and I didn't really film in the izakaya but, uh, sorry, the pub but um, basically we've been chatting about swordsmanship, been chatting about music, you know, basically chatting about everything. But it's now night time and I'm going to walk through 
um, Wakayama Castle because everything is alight with beautiful light. All the sakura is out. It looks really good tonight. It looks, it looks really, really good. So everybody seems to be up and about and around, and everything's beautiful. So yeah, superb. Let's have a wander through. So as you can see, this is a. Uh, they've got the cherry blossom parties going on, but it's quite late, and. Uh, I'm going to have a wander through, see what's going on, but I think I've probably missed everything, So, but it's still very, very beautiful. Right guys, last night I went out drinking with um, Ikeda Sensei from this dojo, do you remember the dojo? So I'm just going to, they're all practicing swordsmanship, so I'm going to go and have a gander and chat to them. So, remember the dojo guys? So I'm going to put my phone away and go chat. Right guys, uh, I've just been to the dojo and uh, seen everyone, watched a lesson. Uh, I'm literally just in a pair of shorts and flip flops. I've got no kit with me and I'm on the move. So I might be able to go back tomorrow morning, um, put up the Shoninki Mokuroku on the wall. I'm not sure, it's a bit of a, a difficult one because um, you don't know who to ask or they, they deal with that. So, um, but we've just had a lovely, just watched them, talked a bit through the original purpose of the Waza in Kami or you and uh, got just basically said hello, took some chocolate, said hello to everyone. Um, that's about it. And we talked about um, sword handle wrapping, and uh, there's a guy in there who's pretty good at it, so he was showing us how to do some sword handle. Not me per se, but everybody was talking to everyone about it. It was really good. So uh, I'm now going to go. It's washing day, so not much is going to happen today beyond washing and getting my clothes ready. Right guys, these are Japanese coin laundries, so uh, bizarrely, it's the other way around. That's the washing machine and that's the dryer. So a lot of people think that's the washing machine. So um, basically you lift them up, put your money in, put a bit of powder in. Now normally, like it's a bit of a problem here, there's no powder in this one. Normally I have some powder for people to use, but or a little machine where you can get powder out of it, but there's nothing there. So, um, However, I think they've now attached uh, this What's it called? You don't need to put any powder in anymore. I think they've attached these sort of pink lines and this one says you don't need it at all. So I'll put my stuff in there. Uh, but this one's a little bit more complicated. It's a wash and dry. They're complicated enough in English, let alone in Japanese. Um, but that's what you mainly do when you're in Japan. Um, and there's quite a lot of laundries left. We don't really have them in the UK anymore. Everybody's got a washing machine and a dryer. So I don't know about the old America. So we're just on the top floor at the minute doing a bit of chilling out. And uh, then my room's getting done at the minute, so I can't go in it. Um, so yeah, and that's basically sort of living in Japan for an extended period of time. So when you come, enjoy it. I've pretty much done nothing but sleep and do laundry today. I'm sporting my Natori of Japan top, um, the black ones for those who come on these trips with me. Um, I'm walking around the castle. Uh, <laughs> Just gonna get back to it, but there's not much to report. I have done nothing. Have a bath, relax. I have actually said, if you don't know about Japan, there's something called Kudo Neko. I think I've said it before, the black cat thing. And uh, you get to send your stuff all over Japan for relatively cheap, to be fair. Relatively cheap. Um, just send my luggage on ahead of me to the airport. It's really good. So I just got my day bag but I've got my armour to carry that I'm taking home, I've got everything to send it all to the airport hotel and I'll pick it up when I get there and then uh, hopefully and then uh, we will go from there. Right I'm just going to do, um, there's not much going on now in the evening to be fair so I'll probably just sign off here or unless I see something nice in the castle I'll let you know. Do you remember this guys? This is the same day by the way, this is the gate, this is the one that's actually next to um, Natori. So if you didn't see the other video, basically this gate is from the late Edo period. So it was built late Edo in mid 1800s. And it is the size of the gate and it was actually the gate next door to the Natori family. So not Natori Matazumi, but the later Natori family because they went up in their um, money. Basically they'd shot up in cash because one of the, I think Natori's great grandson was mint. So uh, he shot up in cash and that is their next door neighbour's gate. So the Natori family walked past this very gate many, many, many times. However, it's in a different position now. They've moved it and rebuilt it here. Um, 
So basically, Natori Ryu sort of students visiting the original Natori family or the Natori family would have been in this gate. But remember though, um, it jumps between the Natori family and the other families, the actual school. So don't forget the difference between Natori lineage and Natori Ryu lineage, different things. So, uh, but that's their next door neighbor. All right, guys, I've just read the information for these stones. So we're still in Wakayama Castle. And these, apparently, that's meant to represent the outline of a boat. And uh, it's got the seven uh, lucky gods in it that bring happiness from Japanese sort of folklore. Um, <coughs> so, but it says on the board, it says, reputedly, it was made by Kato Kiyamasa, which was... Um, <clears throat> if you don't know, he's a famous war hero. But by the time that Kishu Tokugawa had come here, he was dead. But he was his father-in-law, basically. So, um, <clears throat> but what it is saying is that these are very early uh, here. But they used to be at the top on the in the castle area, in the garden. But they were moved here in 1923. So for us guys from Natoryu, without doubt, Isu Sensei would have been in the garden with these, with Yorinobu. And this was part of the uh, the upper garden, the upper castle, where Yorinobu used to chill out and do his stuff. So without doubt, they are from Natori's time. They've just moved position. So, uh, and obviously they have meaning there, with the seven lucky gods. You all right, guys, just showing you this. Basically, I'm sat in the evening. That is Wakayama Castle there. And um, I'm sitting underneath some cherry blossom trees and the cherry blossom keeps blowing on here and there they are, cherry blossom trees up near the castle. Let me show you the castle. Um, so I'm underneath the castle in the evening and uh, just chilling out. I'm chilling in this little thing but you can see all the cherry blossom trees are above. So that's my evening in Japan. <laughs> So I shall, you can see, there's the, um, this is the, the ramparts going up, and there you can see all the cherry blossoms and all that and everything, and that's the town below, so it's a nice evening actually, it's pretty cool. Right guys, I'm at Aonji Temple, I'm enjoying a cup of tea and some bread, um, Yamamoto-san's not here at the moment, uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning, I've just been to the dojo um, to see, say goodbye to the guys. Uh, I did try to swiftly put our locker rock up in the dojo, but it was too wide, so I'll have to come up with a new plan. Um, the sensei was laughing, saying we're doing a Natoriyu takeover. So I was like, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's very bright in here. Um, so beyond that, I'm just going to move to Kamakura today, but I've got a meeting with NHK next, so I will um, do that first. Wow, that is bright. <laughs> Alright guys, it's the morning after and I'm in Kamakura and I've come to the Great Buddha statue. Uh, they started charging to get in. I don't ever remember it being a charge to get in, but you know, fair enough. I suppose it's a tourist thing. Uh, it's not expensive though, it's like two dollars or something. But uh, it is pretty impressive. I forget how good it is. I used to just come up here, but you forget how actually impressive the thing is. Let me just get up the steps. Whenever I see stuff like this, I have to use the sound effects of boom, boom. <laughs> God, I've been here it was a long time ago since I last finished. Well, that is massive. Can you see the woman there? It is massive. I'm just doing the new book of mine, um, that Samurai Stories. And uh, some of the monks who used to own this place 
in the late 1800s were thinking about cashing in and getting rid of the statue, melting it down for the bronze for the uh, cost of it. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's quite funny, you know, national treasure. But at one point they were trying to burn it; they were trying to melt it down for cash. So uh, I think it, I can't remember who recorded it. It was one of the British dip or American diplomats in the Meiji period. Yeah, right, guys, this is uh, Kamakura. So, oh, I think I'm zoomed in. There we go. So this is Kamakura, uh, the main street leading up to the main temple. Oh, I'm about to be run over. Uh, randomly a car on a pedestrian way. Not sure what's going on there. Um, but yeah, basically tourist shops, nice stuff. But there's cool temples, cool stuff. We've just been to see the Great Buddha. I'm now going to try and find Prince Morinaga's grave. Right, guys, you can see how commercial before it was in Kamakura and there's tons of people in the shrines and the temples but you see this unassuming piece of land here which is pretty much derelict and there's nobody here it's overgrown it's a bit naff it's actually um and sorry i meant to film it it's back down there there's another one that's equally unassuming but it's got um a grave in the middle and it's actually the Minamoto clan. It's got the Hojo clan. It's one of the most powerful samurai that ever lived. And their mausoleums have been destroyed hundreds of years ago. But they said they'd done excavation here and they found out the site map. But nothing. <coughs> That's it. Not even a vase. You know, there's like graves everywhere. And some of the most powerful samurai in all of Japan. And there's just nothing here. So it's a little bit disappointing, considering uh, the Hojo pretty much started, the, and the Minamoto started the way of samurai government and the way we all understand samurai today, to be like the top tier class of of Japan. So it's pretty, it's a bit of a sad look at it, you know. It's clearly not walked upon. There's very little traffic. It's a little bit sad, to be honest. Right, we're at the top of that little bit, so I've just come up those stairs. And with that out of the beaten track now that there's, the English signs have gone, and there's not even any modern Japanese signs, so I can't tell you whose is whose, or whose is whose. Uh, tomb. Whom the tomb. I don't know. So, um, but they're the three. It does say on the signs down there the three names, but obviously I can't know which one is which. They're pretty cool. Right guys, I can't find the grave of Prince Morinaga. We've really got off the beaten track here now. And as I've shown you, there's nothing much left. So I've, I've followed the signs as far as I can. But <coughs> the signs are pretty much thinned out now. And there's no tourists, so I should presumably just stop putting signs around this area. So, um, I'm not sure. So I'll have to do a bit of looking when I get back. And uh, I didn't, I, I haven't got a map with me. So I shall have to have a look another time but um, there is the Minamoto bit I was telling you about at the top there you go so I shall go and have a look around right guys I <coughs> literally just been to the area where I think it is but everything was there seems closed up and I'm not sure and as I say everything's gone into pure Japanese and then there's just no signs at all so I'm in roughly the right area but it's a bit off the beaten track so I'm not sure but so let's leave that one now um, however it is bizarre that Kamakura is literally the, the foundation of samurai power in Japan and I've just come through and I've really thought about it before but now it's like yeah considering it is the place where the samurai took power of all Japan and pretty much started all of what we consider samurai history, i.e. them at the top of the food chain, you know, and taking over the country, um, and then going to wars, and then the Sengoku period, and then the shogunate capturing all of Japan, you know, all of those things pretty much have a basis here in Kamakura. There's no samurai history here whatsoever, none, zero. There's lots of Buddhist statues, lots of little temples, lots of this and that, but no samurai history. Not even, I don't even know where the castle is that was um, defeated. It's not even on the maps anywhere, like this is the res of the old castle. Nothing, anywhere. So I shall try and have a bit more research at home. I do recommend you guys come to Kamakura though, it's absolutely beautiful. It really is very beautiful. It's a very, very Japanese experience. 
Uh, so please do find your way over. You alright guys? I'm feeling a little bit sleepy and tired to be honest. A little bit bored now. Um, five days to go, but it's a long 22 days, pretty much on your own. It's quite intense. I saw, like, I'm in Tokyo at the minute, I mean, it went on, but uh, so Yamamoto San's in Wakayama, Miyako San's in Okayama, uh, Yoshie is in work tomorrow, so it's a Thursday night. Um, obviously, you guys couldn't come across this time. Uh, I messaged a couple of my old friends from Japan, but it's a work night basically, so I'll probably meet them at the weekend. But, so it's a bit boring. So uh, <laughs> I forget I've lived here for over five years, so coming to Tokyo on a Thursday night is not special. So um, I should really try and visit a dojo. The problem I've got is every time I visit things like Koryu, you know I get annoyed because I'm like. So I went out for dinner the other night with Kade Sensei. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, you're right, and, you know. And we did the interview, you've seen the interview on YouTube, it's there with Metatron. So I go to these dojos and I think, you know, I want to find out how samurai used to fight, really, like really, how did they used to fight. So it's just a Thursday night, we're not much to do, no research I can do. Everywhere's closed, beyond food. If you've never been to Tokyo, basically, it's after night, it's drinking, food, um, gambling. You know, prostitutes, that sort of stuff. Basically, the, you know, the nightlife comes out, but nothing I'm really interested in. So, um, let's see what's going on. Here. This is cool. I love stuff like this. People randomly just singing in street con, and they're not doing it for begging either. They're doing it. For, what I love about this place is they're not begging. They're doing it to say, "Hey, look, I'm playing guitar. Amazing." Amazing. Right, I'm gonna carry on walking around, guys. See what's about. Um, oh, what nice the temples all lit up. Let me show you. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So, I'm gonna have a wander down there. It's the next get day, guys. I'm um, just gonna show you this. I'm just waiting around for Yoshie. She's going for a bite sweet with Yoshie. But um, do you remember this? This is all the sakura trees. Less than uh, one week, and. Uh, it's uh, gone, it's all gone, apart from two of the diff so that's what I'm saying, you can see the different types of trees, so you can see there, that's of course staying for a long time, the other one next to it is staying for even longer, and these are all gone now, all totally gone, as quick as that. Right guys, it's the next day, I went out with Yoshi last night, um, but we didn't film, we just chatted, so... <coughs> I just want to show you this, there's a load of boards here, I'm, still, I'm a little bit in the way to be honest guys, but I'm, I'm looking at the ones that are all from before 1868, so some of them are after 1868, uh, which means they're costume dress, but the ones before 1868 are photographs of actual samurai, not people dressed as samurai, and I want you to notice nearly all of them, their wakazashis have no hilt, almost all of them, 1864, no hilt, 1864, no hilt or minimal hilt 1862 minimal hilt 1862 can't really see 1867 minimal hilt no hilt I'm talking about the wakazashi here of course um, then unknown date of Japanese man but almost no hilt it's more of a dagger um, unknown date uh, 1868, so should still be Samurai, but you can't. Uh, it's not, sorry, not Samurai. Uh, circus performers, sorry. Hold on. It's just. Uh, okay, I think we've run out of Samurai, basically. Okay, so there you go. If you look at them. But, interestingly, the uh, circus performers wearing Hakama, uh, bizarrely. So. And it's 1868, so it should still be in the time. So th these are the things the researchers need to do on Hakama because who is and who is not allowed to wear them and in what situation. And most of the Hakama we wear today are actually quite wrong or quite, not wrong is the word, they're horse riding Hakama, which is a, a formal thing. So it's, I tend to wear a very short dagger with no hilt. I prefer it. And uh, it seems that it, quite a lot of people preferred it in samurai time. So maybe more research on that. 
All right, guys, uh, as I say, it's the next day, so I'm not really trying to bore you to death with these. But this is the coolest place in Japan. It's pretty much my favourite place in Japan, to be fair. And it's called Odaiba, and it's the man-made island off Tokyo. So there's looking at Tokyo. And there's literally, I think it's... I was talking to my friend last night. I met up with a friend I've not seen for a few years. And um, basically, this is an expensive place to live. So it's got a man-made beach, all the apartment blocks are there. Uh, it's basically rich person's villa. However, the, you know, anybody can come here, you just get on the train and get here. So a lot of these people are just visitors for the day. But this is probably my favourite place in all of Japan, in fairness. Just because it's like, even though it's man-made and totally new, um, it just is, it's got that beach happy feel about it you know sports and yachts and it's just very much my old style life where uh, i spent a lot of time obviously sailing as you guys know and a lot of time yachting and all that well tall ship sailing actually so uh, i spent a lot of time in harbors and marinas so it's always nice to come back to this so anyway that's odaiba and it's uh there's the bridge i'm going to try and walk across that bridge later i used to do it back in the day so you can still do it today but uh it's not too hot, so I'll give it a go in a bit. <laughs> so this is Odaiba, and uh, the sort of semi-man-made island off Tokyo, and uh, which is over there. There's the Ferris wheel, there's the TV tower. And this is Rainbow Bridge, the famous bridge in Japan, but a lot of people don't realize you can walk it. So uh, you have to come up here. It's weird, if you're on a bicycle, you have to put your bicycle on a skateboard. No joke, you put the back wheel on a skateboard. It's just like a, like a crate with a wheel on it. And then you have to wheel it across. But there, as you can see, the people walking on the lower and the upper one is the cars and the, uh, I think the train comes over this one, yeah. So it's like the three, the walking, the cars and the train, possibly. I can't find the tracks for it at the minute. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And it's a good walk. So uh, I'm going to crack on, get over that. Uh, so if you ever come to Tokyo, have a go at this. It's good fun walking across the river. Right guys, it's the day before I fly home. I'm actually at the airport, so I'm going to um, a local hotel. So you have to come to the airport, then get a free shuttle bus to the hotel. So <laughs> still got this cough killing. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is probably sign this off here, uh, just because all you're going to do, I'm just going to be in the hotel room, get the bus in the morning, get on a plane. So unless something amazing happens tonight, I will, uh, you know, call it here. But what have we learned? We've I've done a lot of travelling. I've seen uh, Kawakami Sensei. Uh, which was excellent. Met up with Yoshie, of course, Miyako, done the radio. I've also received uh, Gunzo Yodoki, uh, a third of the scroll, but not sure if it's Naturi or not. Um, I possibly have found another scroll, the name of another scroll. I've not found the scroll itself, but I've found another name. Um, I've met the O'Hara family, I've seen the original bands and Shukai. There's lots of that type of stuff gone on. So that's why these trips are worth doing. I must admit, I didn't get as much as I'd hoped for, but, you know, I've made contacts in different shrines, I've made contacts in Coca. The trip to Coca was actually very good because people um, got to know me there a bit more, um, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, that's it for this year, chaps. I'm, I'll try my best to get here again for 2019, but not sure yet, because um, it has to be worth coming, to be honest. It has to be nowadays, I've been in Japan for such a massive part of my life coming here now is just a little bit of a waste of time unless I've got something directly to do or a load of you chaps are coming out with me so uh, we'll have to work on 2019 see where we get to uh, but that's it for now right I'm gonna go to my hotel I'm going to relax take a bath and uh, possibly get some scran and uh, then I shall fly off to the UK in the morning I hope you've enjoyed it please feel free to join Natori Ryu and of course get yourself over to Japan with me in one of the years that we go and get yourself a black top for being here so uh, see what you think alright guys see you later I think my bus has arrived